Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're taking a look back at 2021. The things which affected the way I operate off-grid ham radio, fixed station, and in the field. If you stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. 2021 was very important. We consolidated components, reduced current consumption, and reduced as much of the station complexity as possible. This complexity also altered the way we think about the Raspberry Pi for field communications. Unfortunately, it was the Raspberry Pi which probably took the biggest hit from the lessons learned during 2021. Now, another lesson learned during the year was trying to stop thinking about portable power as an afterthought, instead thinking of it as a critical component within a system. This was true regardless of operating low power or a QRO station in the field, which actually led us down a rabbit hole. Ultimately, we had to think to ourselves, how could we run QRO in the field without negating the benefit of QRO by having to carry ridiculously large or spare battery packs? There were definitely some great lessons in 2021. This is when the reduction of current consumption was moved to the top of the list of problems to solve as I designed myself a new station. The first realization was the need to get rid of my QRO radios. The reason being, on receive, most QRO radios on the market draw one or two amps just sitting there doing nothing on receive. This is true whether they are putting out 100 watts or 1 watt. So it's completely unsustainable with lightweight portable power. To solve the problem, I switched over to QRP radios with an external amplifier rather than a QRO radio with 100 watts built in. This allows me to work QRP with extremely low current consumption or QRO without the overhead of a QRO radio. Now don't get me wrong, it certainly is nice having an all-in-one rig with 100 watts, but for sustainable off-grid communications, a reduced current consumption is a higher priority. The benefit, or what some might consider the reward of operating with low current consumption, probably becomes most apparent when you look at the size of our portable power supplies. Simply put, as we're using less current consumption on receive, we can use smaller, lighter battery packs with lower capacity without taking a hit in operating time. Now I can already imagine some of the questions coming in in the comments. People will question this idea of using lower current consumption and demanding some validation of this proposal. Well, if you remember a couple of years ago, we did the X Days Off Grid series on the channel. We took the 576 watt hour solar generator and the Yaesu FT891 out to the field, only to run up power on the third day. Ironically, the output power wasn't the problem. It was actually the standby current, the receive current of the radio, which took up the majority of my reserves. The reason most ham radio operators don't notice this is because, generally speaking, we're usually doing events like POTA a couple of hours at a time at a park bench, or a couple of hours at a time on a summit, or other types of operating where we're only operating for short periods of time. What I'm trying to say is we can't reconcile the differences between low current consumption or simply not caring about current consumption at all until we spend an adequate amount of time in the field. Now I can say exactly the same thing about not spending enough time deployed and training in poor weather conditions. If we're only deploying when it's sunny, when it's warm, when it's convenient, we'll never actually understand how our stations and portable power supplies react under less than optimal conditions. 
This is a lesson which became blatantly clear during October of 2021, when we deployed the solar-powered field station on Hailuoto Island in the Gulf of Bothnia. Being forced to operate with a finite amount of battery power made the lesson blatantly obvious. Another lesson learned during 2021 was the significance and importance of asynchronous communications. Unlike casual communications like POTA or SOTA, islands on the air, for these type of excursions it doesn't matter if we take a one hour or two hour break coming back to the radio when we're ready. For emergency communications, disaster communications, for preparedness or group communications, Missing that incoming message might actually cause someone to lose their lives. Missing that message might also mean we don't have the latest up-to-date information we're supposed to have. This is why I prefer asynchronous data communications over CW, over SSB, or any other mode which requires you to sit in front of the radio for long periods of time waiting for a message to come in or not. With asynchronous communications using modes like WinLink or peer-to-peer -peer WinLink, JS8 Call, or Vada Chat, we no longer have to sit in front of the radio waiting for that message to come in. This leaves us with a couple of different options. We can leave the radio on waiting for messages to come in, or we can take the radio with us and collect those messages the next time we have the opportunity to grab messages over the air. Asynchronous data communications and messaging is an excellent concept, but one generally dismissed by the greater ham radio community, who tends to focus on real-time communications with modes like FT8. 2021 also brought in the emergence of new computing technologies for our data communications. Now, I knew I'd get a lot of flack on the channel for moving away from the Raspberry Pi and landing firmly in the court of the Microsoft Surface. Still, that decision wasn't taken lightly. Integrating a Microsoft Surface or Panasonic Toughbook or any other off-grid-friendly tablet or laptop all offer undeniable benefits over our Raspberry Pi alternative. In regards to emergency communications and preparedness, switching over to an all-in-one system running a Windows operating system gives us a better selection of feature-rich applications, provides us with inbuilt batteries and low current consumption, removes the need of integrating so many different components just to make the system work, and finally, there are fewer components to carry. Now, for those of you who were bent out of shape about the status of the Raspberry Pi on the channel, don't worry. We're not actually dumping the Raspberry Pi. We just need to figure out solutions which will help us field the Raspberry Pi more efficiently. Now, for those of us who still aren't on board with this move to the Microsoft Surface or Panasonic Toughbook, Think about it from the perspective of off-grid communications, emergency communications, and or preparedness. Now, for whatever reason, other operating systems haven't evolved in the same way as, for example, Mac OS or Windows in regards to setup and configuration. This isn't a knock against other operating systems, which often have their own unique benefits. In my opinion, for emergency communications and or preparedness, especially off-grid, quick initial setup time is critical. A simple and easy to use restore point backup system is critical. The ability to restore the system and data without the internet in the field. And regardless of what operating system we're using, plug and play hardware. Now, although amateur radio is definitely a technical hobby, in the field is not the place where we want to start fiddling around with difficult to configure computers. So we keep our systems as simple as possible, ensuring the data and the hardware 
can be restored by a radio operator in the field. Now, undoubtedly, if we spend enough time talking about reduced current consumption, operating efficiency, and increased operating time, we will inevitably arrive at portable off-grid power. It may not be completely apparent, but when we start reducing current consumption, when we create more efficient stations, as I've said earlier in the video, we increase our operating time, but there is another benefit we gain from the strategy. Operating more efficient stations means we can carry smaller batteries and even smaller solar panels. Now, batteries are heavy. Flexible solar panels are not. So my primary lesson from 2021, reduce the current consumption by operating a QRP radio. We augment the QRP radio with a low current consumption amplifier if and when it's necessary. This solves the current consumption problem we have on receive with the QRO radio. Now we can reduce the size of our batteries. Now previously we had been using cells like the Headway to make our own DIY QRO battery packs. Those cells and packs were incredibly useful, but they weren't man-portable. In fact, the only reason we needed such capable battery packs was because of the received current consumption of our QRO radios. Now we can carry and field man-portable battery packs without a penalty in operating time. Now another part of this lesson was sizing our smaller battery packs for nighttime and poor weather operations. During nighttime ops, our battery packs act as a nighttime reserve. During the daytime, that same battery pack acts as a solar buffer. Because of our lower current consumption, we can now size our solar panels according to the received current consumption of our radios. We can also add some additional capacity to recharge our batteries after a night's operations. Essentially, the solar panel will be powering our radio anytime it's just sitting there on receive. By reducing our current consumption, we reduce almost every other portable power component of the station. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have a different idea or concept for fielding your own low power station? And especially for those of you who are still using QRO radios while man portable in the field, let us know how you're fielding your radio, how you're carrying your gear, and how you're powering it in the field with all the other gear you have to carry. All right, guys, you know the deal. If you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and or a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.